At the Globe Factory, production revolves around world events. As war and political upheaval redraw boundaries, these spherical maps are revised accordingly. To make a globe, they start with a big roll of cardboard. A machine pulls it under a roller that coats it with glue. A knife then slices the cardboard into smaller pieces, which will serve as liners for the maps. One more coat of glue, and then they stick the liners to the back of maps of hemispheres. Heated rollers press them together, completing the seal. Each map is of a hemisphere, and the printout fans out like a pinwheel. A powerful press now cuts the maps along those lines. They position each map carefully in the cutting press. After all, one false move, and they could lose parts of Japan. It takes two punch cuts to do the job. They pull away the excess paper from between the 12 spoke-like sections of the map. Here's a top view of that cutting press. It acts like a giant fist to punch out the map pinwheels. And now, it's time to shape the world. They place a map cutout and a separate liner in a mold of half a globe. It rises into a heated cavity and presses them into a bowl-like shape. Now they have a hemisphere. But of course, there are two in every world. They make the southern hemisphere with the same type of mold. The molds also emboss each map to signify peaks and valleys on the Earth's surface. Here's an inside look at those molds. The raised and indented sections of the molds make impressions on the globes. They'll allow people to see and feel variations in the world's topography, both above ground and underwater. The hemispheres are now complete, and it's time to go global. They spin a northern hemisphere, while a razor blade trims the edges. Then a lower hemisphere goes for a spin, while a nozzle beads hot glue along the inside. This stiff cardboard ring adheres to it and gives the hemisphere some reinforcement along the equator. They apply glue to the northern hemisphere and it fits over the ridged edge of the southern one. They precisely align the two halves and then they tape over the seam. This both disguises it and marks the equator. Next, they mount each globe on a pedestal that's attached to a metal arc, called a meridian. Suction to the top of the globe, the meridian will allow it to revolve. From fragments of paper and cardboard to a globe, this world was made in just a couple of hours. Globes tell us where we are in the world and help us figure out where we're going. Globes come in many different languages because there is, well, a worldwide demand for them. And because they help us get our bearings, you could say they make the world a better place.